Hello and welcome to the demo video for the client follow-up schedule. Um, now for those of you who may have had the older version looking at this game, well that doesn't look like mine, you're probably right. Uh, the date today is the 27th of November 2019 that I'm recording this video and um, the new version, this is the new version, it's going to be up in the next few days. There was an older version <clears throat> called the client follow-up schedule um, and after I've got some feedback from some people who purchased it and I in fact used it myself, I've decided that there were quite a few changes that we wanted to make to it. So I've actually gone and done a remake because the old one was quite old. It was one of the original spreadsheets I made and uh, obviously learned a lot since then. So this is the new version. Um, yeah, just make sure obviously you've got the right one. This one, let me talk you through it. Settings tab, fairly straightforward. Your business name locked in there. You can put a username in here so you can have uh, various different users using different spreadsheets if you want to. Um, and then the categories. Now, the categories that you can list there are you will be able, will be able to, or you'll need to categorize each uh, entry, each different person that you want to follow up. So initially, I made the uh, client follow up schedule for people like IFAs who needed to regularly follow up with their client, whether it be once every six months or once a year, that kind of thing. <clears throat> but what is actually turned out is actually now. It's not only to follow up with clients, but also leads, uh, potential clients. So I'll show you how it works, but you'll be able to categorize each lead or each potential client. So the way I choose to categorize them is by the type of project that I'll be doing for them or the type of product that they're going to buy. So you can name the different categories here. Just don't put any duplicates in, but you can name what you want next to each color. Those are the colors that they'll appear on the graphs. The only other thing on the settings, the bank holidays. Now, the bank holidays, this is a new thing that I'm putting into the spreadsheets. What has happened, um, and I believe it's going to happen in 2020, where one of the bank holidays actually changes. So the, the spreadsheet will work out bank holidays. Um, it's not that important on this spreadsheet because all this does is works out how many working days until, uh, you know, uh, until the next time it's due and that kind of thing. So it's not vitally important, but you obviously don't want to be scheduling a follow-up on a bank holiday. It's that kind of thing. So what you'll be able to do is if I put in, say, for argument's sake, 1st of January 2020, you'll see there's a tick there because that is, in fact, a bank holiday. It recognizes a bank holiday. If they're going to move the 1st of January 2020 to the 2nd of January 2020 for some strange reason, then what that'll do is it'll go, that was the original bank holiday, is now on this bank holiday. So you can edit bank holidays. So I know there's one in 2020. I can't remember which one it is. It's actually changing days. So Excel will work it out and put it on, onto the correct day. So if you find, if you ever hear news that a bank holiday has been changed, you can change it on there. But as I said, on this spreadsheet, it's not that vital because um, you don't actually see each individual day anyway. So if you forget to do that, it's, it's not a big deal. Let's move on to the lead and client database. So this is where you actually put in all your different leads in your clients. So really, client name, I have just put first names and I just put fictitious names in there. You obviously put first name and surname so you know who it is. Uh, job description, just put something short about the particular project or whatever it is that they're looking for, the service or that kind of thing. You can put a contact number. Sometimes I'll put LinkedIn and Facebook. If I've messaged them on Facebook or LinkedIn, then I know where to go to see, you know, to follow up with, with what we've uh, discussed. Your contact email, I've left them blank, but you put your, the client's contact email address in there. These are just general contact details that you would have. Then select the category. If you don't select a category, you see it goes yellow to tell you to select a category. You do need to select one. So what I would suggest doing is putting an other as a category. So if you can't select it, you can just put it in some, some kind of category. And then the type, just that if it's a lead or if it's a client. So select from the drop-down list. to see lead or client. Um, it's got to be one of the two. Then how often do you want to follow up? Now you can see their months and their days. This is where it's changed somewhat from the last one. The last spreadsheet, it only had months. But actually, there were times when, especially with leads, when we needed to follow up more often than once a month. Um, so we've got up a month and days. If you put in, say, six months and 12 days, it'll work six months and 12 days. It'll add the two together. But you can put in months or days or months and days, and that will essentially work out when your next the next follow-up is. Let's just remove this for now because I'll show you what that's for. Uh, all right, then you've got your initial date. Now, your initial date is the first date when you when you when you add them to the list. 
Um, it'll immediately start to check when your next follow up date is. And then every time you follow up, just put the last follow up date. So you can see when I've last followed up, if I come to this person again and follow up again, in fact, here's one, 27th of November. This is person's due to be followed up today. Um, if I then follow up today, I'll just go here to the 27th of November and put today's date. In fact, if we watch here to the right, where that 27th of November there, if I do 27th of November, you can see that then changes the 4th of December. So it's already worked out the next time I need to follow up with that person. Oops. All right. So that's all you need to do. These two yellow columns, if you want to override the follow-up date. So if you go, well, actually, that 27th of November, I'm, I don't want to follow up on the 27th of November. I only want to follow up the following week or whatever the case might be. Let's take one of these ones here where you kind of go, you got every one month and you go 2nd of December. I'm going to be out that day. Let's put it down for the 3rd or 4th. You can come in here and override the 3rd of December. You see there, it'll go to 3rd of December. So you can override that date with the next follow-up date. Just be warned then that when you actually do follow up and you update this date, that won't change until you just go and remove that from the next follow-up. So this is just an override. If you look at it and go, well, no, that date, I don't really want that date this particular round. I just want to change it. Just pop a date in there and then just clear it and do you use your last follow-up. That will automate, the next follow up will automate as all these. That just shows the name of the person, their job description together. Um, that's not vital. I just use that data on some of the other um, sheets. So I thought I'd put it up there for you to see. You know, it doesn't necessarily do anything because you've already got that information over here. Lastly, on this page is your rank. So, what this is, is which it looks through the days to see which is the most urgent to be following up and it gives it a rank of one and then two and so on and so forth. Um, when you go to the follow-up list, you'll be able to see these ranked in order. I'll show you how that works in a second. But, in fact, let's have a look at that, and I'll come back to this rank. When you have a look at the follow-up list, the follow-up list takes all of them and puts them in the order of priority. Now, you've got various filters here, which I'll talk about. But as you can see here, that's line number four, that's line number one, line number six, and so on and so forth. So if you use a follow-up and you come in and you go, who do I need to follow up with today? Yeah, there's some pink ones. This is the one I need to follow up with. That's Sean on line number four. When you go to the uh, lead and client, line number four, Sean, there it is. So now you know where they are, so you can find them easier because you've seen where they are on the follow-up list. You can also, if they're more than 30, yeah, they're only 27. If they're more than 30, it goes off the page, and that will say page one of two, and you can simply come here and say, I'd like to view page two, please. There is nothing on page two, but if there is, you'll be able to see page two. Also, both types, what do you want to display? Do you just want to dis uh, display leads or do you want to display clients and or both? If you go, well, leads only, it'll only show the leads. If you say, well, put the clients only, it'll only show the clients in, in, the, in the order again of, of, import, of urgency or you can show both. You can also filter. So you can also say, well, actually, I'd rather not see the basic range or actually I don't want to see the others or I don't want to see the referrals or whatever the case might be. If you if you uncheck, if you go come here and select the cross for any of these things, what it'll do is it'll take them off. So let's just take off once of large for argument's sake. Uh, remove that. Then it takes all of them off and it just shows the other one. So you can eliminate, you can do these settings however you want in order to bring through the uh, respective follow-ups in the order of urgency that, that you need to do. And then, as I said, you can check here for the line number and go back to this page. Now, let's just say you, you, you come to your follow-up list and you've got a whole list of 20 people you need to follow up and you're thinking, well, what? I don't want to keep clicking backwards and forwards. Uh, I'd really like to, I'd just like to see all 20 at the top. What you can do is if you come back here, these ranks here is what appears on your follow-up list. Those are the ranks. Now, it's not entirely true because these ones will, all the items will be ranked here, even the ones that aren't on the follow-up list if you've used the filter. The only thing is it will still bring the filtered ones to the top. So for argument's sake, if you've got, um, uh, if you filter and you take off the ones of large, for argument's sake, and you left with that, what it'll do when you do your, when you do this, and you, if you use these, the ranks here, it'll put all the ones of large at the bottom. 
that uh, it'll bring up, it'll bring the, the ones that aren't once at large up higher up on the list. So it will be the same as a follow up list, but it'll contain everything. So what all you need to do then, if you want to basically sort this list in the same orders as, as the other list, all you do is you come here. If you press shift control and down, it will go all the way down to the bottom. Right click copy, and then you use the sorter column. So you just simply right click paste values, not normal paste. That'll paste the formatting and ruin your spreadsheet. Use paste values. And then you can just go sort A to Z. And it'll sort that data. Now you've got them in the same order as your other lists. So now you can just scroll across. You can just go down and do your follow-ups as you go. It won't resort each time you do a follow-up because this data has been pasted across. So these ranks will change as you do the follow-ups, but it'll keep it in that order. And then when, once you've got it in that order, you can just simply go here and clear that data. And you've got them in the right order. There's one other feature on here. At the top here, show inclusive or exclusive lines. What you can do is if you say yes for that, what it does now is it shows them in green. So if I go to the follow-up list and say, well, actually, I don't want one sort of large, and you come back here, you can see the ones of large are now in red. So it will show you which ones aren't going through to the follow-up list and which ones are going through. But sometimes I find that might be a little bit distracting. So if you just don't want to see that, you can just go to there and say no and switch it off. Um, so that's pretty much all the usage. The only thing left to show you is the report. <coughs> uh, oh, there, there's one more thing. Sorry, the archive tab. Let me just show you that before I show you the report. If you've got items on here, now this was something I added on um, because this was what I found useful. I often, ha I sometimes had one or two people on here that actually I thought, you know what, I don't want to keep them on the follow-up list. <clears throat> I'm not going to keep hassling them, but I don't want to forget that they asked for a spreadsheet. They may have become a client and I didn't need to follow up with them anymore, or they may still be a lead. And I thought I just want to have them in the back of my mind in case the situation arose, but I didn't want to follow up with them regularly. All I do then is highlight that particular person, right click, copy, come to the archive, right click, paste values. And then I can go back to the this one, highlight them again, clear contents, resort, um, and then they will be on here. So I can keep some on the archive. The archive uh, doesn't actually do anything per se. It does feed the report, which I'll show you in a minute. But here they can just stay here. There's no updated dates, nothing changes. It just stores the data. If you want to make them live again to remind you to pull up, you can just simply come and reverse that process, copy it here, come back to your lead client, go down to a new row, paste values, and then resort. And that will then effectively uh, bring them back live, and it'll the next follow-up will pop up. You might be overdue. You might just have to do a follow-up to catch up again, but then it will continue. Um, so that's how you use the spreadsheet. There's one more thing, and that is the report page. Now, the report page basically just generates some graphs and things. So it shows you a breakdown of what was done last week, what was done this week, what's overdue, what's due this week, next week, the week after, the week after that. Now, how this works is it will look each it'll look for each week, but if you've got something, for example, if you've got a client that you need to follow up with once a week, it'll show it the same client in all three weeks. So if you've got a client happening every day, it's going to show that seven times this week, seven times that week, seven times that week, if that makes sense. So you just need to keep that, keep, bear that in mind. This shows, this is just to give you an idea of your actual workload that you need to do in, in following up with each person. That's why I've, I've multiplied it out. So if you have one reoccurring every week, it will appear, it will basically be a counterpoint each of these weeks. So you can just get an idea of what you need to be following up with in the next few, in the next four, a few weeks. As you can see, the solid colors are those that are clients, and the transparent colors are those that are leads. If I scroll down, everything below this header here, it doesn't, it only takes the count into consideration. It doesn't actually take, it doesn't multiply it out. What, what this is, is just a breakdown of what your, uh, what your, your list consists of. So um, we can see it's quite a large percentage here of the uh, ones of small and ones of large mainly leads you can see exactly what your what your uh, list is made up of and here it just shows it slightly differently so it shows each of the different categories um, but based on on solid being the um, uh, clients and transparent being the leads 
and it just gives you the numbers down here, number of clients, number of leads, percentages, uh, percentages of, of each category. So now there's 100% of the um, collaboration are actually clients. That's what that means. Here you can see 40% of the clients, clients here are actually collaboration clients, 40% uh, are, are once of large of, of clients. And then you can see a 47.83% uh, of the leads um, are once of small and once of large. And then that's basically it, a report. It's handy to have just have a look at your workload and have a look at the breakdown of your of your the different types. Um, as I said, th this breakdown might not necessarily be useful for following up, but it is quite useful just to see what, what your leads are. And that's useful to see what your workload is. But this is the list you're probably going to be using most often to get them into the, to have a look and see who's coming up for a uh, follow up. And then this list is obviously the one where you do all, all of the editing. Anything that's lying dormant here you want to move across, take across the archive, copy and paste values. Um, but that's about it. The only thing I will warn you about is obviously if you come here and you've got, say, prime range, it's just going to have a look and see uh, if we've selected. Well, there's a collaboration. Let's just take that one off. If you come here and we change the collaboration name, I'm just taking it off now, and we go back there, you'll see it'll turn red going, it can't find that, that particular um, category. So if you do come and change a category halfway through or remove one or whatever, just go back and just reselect um, anyone here, uh, anyone here that's gone red. And then lastly, if you've got a lead and the lead becomes a client, you just simply come here and just change that and go, that's now a client. It'll carry on. You can change the months and the frequency when you want to follow up if you want to. But otherwise, that's all you need to do is just come and select from client to lead. Um, yeah, I hope that, I hope that's it. I think that's all that I need to explain to you. Um, I hope that that all makes sense. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to know, please feel free to give me a shout and uh, and and ask me. Otherwise, I hope that this uh, does wonders for your business. I hope it really reminds you to follow up with people because I know that's a bit of a pain, and uh, I hope this makes your job easier. Thank you very much, and goodbye.